A big shout out to my 300 subscribers. You guys are awesome. Even if you sub to me because you felt sorry for me, I want to thank you guys. More content is coming. If you have a video idea, feel free to drop it in the comments section. I look at all the comments because there isn't many. Haha. <laughs> all right, let's get started. What a crazy world we're living in right now. With the 2020 NBA season about to start after a 140 day hiatus, there's all sorts of speculation and hesitation from players moving into the Disney bubble. Many people believe that there is a chance that this will quickly end in a shit show, without the conclusion of a winner for the 2019 and 20 season. Which has me thinking, how likely is it there will be a 2020 and 21 season? Another lockout maybe? At this rate of unpredictable events, it's very possible a lockout season will happen. And the player's reasoning? Their health. But what exactly constitutes a lockout anyways? In the past, it's always been about the Benjamins. Basically, when the players feel as if they're being underpaid and the owners are being overpaid, and vice versa, there's a lockout. So let's get to it. Here are five times in order that the NBA went into lockout mode. In the 1995 and 96 season, the NBA encountered its first lockout before the season started. While a previous collective bargaining agreement had expired a year prior, the players and owners signed a temporary agreement to not strike or lock out, but it did allow to sign and restructure players' contracts. That agreement ended one day after the NBA Finals. The NBA and expansion draft were allowed to take place. I guess the NBA can do whatever they wanted, but everything else was halted. No summer league games or trades could take place. The lockout lasted three months so no players got fat or quit basketball. The season still resumed as normal and teams still played 82 games. What would have happened if they didn't reach an agreement? Well, no 72 wins for the Bulls, no return of the Magic coming out of retirement, and you wouldn't see these two teams play. Man, they sucked. But this guy was good. The second lockout happened the following year. It began and ended on July 10th and only lasted three hours. The reason? It had to do with $50 million in TV revenue, in which the players were receiving 50% of. Nope, not enough I guess. The players union pushed for a larger share and they reached an agreement 180 minutes later after a meeting near the monkey bars if you know what I'm saying. Players won. The league agreed to allocate $14 million a year to the salary cap. Did anyone get fat? Nope. Keep in mind, when there is a lockout, players are not allowed to use team facilities, trainers, or staff due to legality issues. A guy breaks his leg, he's not covered by insurance. Okay, I'm making the last part up, but I bet I'm right. Our third lockout took place in the 1998 and 99 season and was more serious than the previous two. The season was shortened to 50 games that year with no All-Star game. Everybody was snubbed. The season was almost cancelled that year indefinitely, and I bet you could guess why. Both sides wouldn't budge and David Stern was flown the idea of replacement players to start the season. I could have made the NBA. Okay, maybe not quite. The players wanted a raise in max contracts and the league minimum. The owners obviously didn't see eye to eye. It usually ends bad for the owners. Players won, and why wouldn't they? At the time, Patrick Ewan was the president of the Players Union and sacrificed his $18 million in pay that year, paving the way for players after him. And it paid off, literally, just not for him. The two sides would finally agree 204 days later, and although they would resume play in the first week of February in 1999, it would come at a cost. NBA ratings and ticket sales were down, and comparing it to the previous seasons, it would stay that way for a few more. Did anyone return fat that season? Yup. This guy. And this guy. In 2011, the NBA saw its fourth lockout in NBA history. It began on July 1st of that year and lasted 161 days, ending on December 8th, delaying and shortening the season from 82 games to 66 games. Wait, 66? Although they missed out on the preseason, there was still an all-star game, and this guy was MVP. So what was the reason for the lockout? Owners wanted to reduce the players' revenue share from 57% to 47%. The players managed to negotiate a 53% share. While this was going on, a little less known fact, LeBron James was serious about trying out for the NFL. Also in discussion was a hard salary cap, which meant that every team would have a $45 million cap to play with in which at that time it was a soft seller cap, in which teams like the Lakers and Magic who were hovering around 90 million, so much for soft, those teams would be in a lot of trouble. But not to worry, still a soft salary cap and more than likely that will never change. The NBA has only suffered four lockouts in history, but in the 2020 and 21 season, with how the world is so cray cray and every player risking their health to play in the NBA bubble, especially with the food that they have to eat, there's a reasonable chance that players will strike causing a lockout for the season, especially if they have to stay in another bubble for 82 games. It will be interesting to see what happens or how they do things. This may be the first time in NBA history players and owners will not fight about money. Well, of course they're going to fight about money, but also their health and safety and well-being. But not just the physical health, but also their mental health. Of staying inside that bubble for so long and not being able to go outside to see family and friends. 
All right, that wraps it up. Hopefully you were entertained. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Until next time. Ah!